Hello, my name is Tosca Bruno van Vijfeiken and I work with the Transnational NGO Leadership Institute, which is housed at the Transnational NGO or TNGO initiative here at the Maxwell School. Um, we're interviewing a range of leaders who are attending our institute, which is um, offering a leadership preparation program for transnational NGO leaders who currently work at the second tier of responsibility in their organization, or in your case, at the top tier at the national chapter level, um, and who wish to prepare themselves for the next leap, as we call it, in leadership. And today I have the opportunity of interviewing Anupama Jha. She is the uh, executive director of Transparency International India. And I'll ask you in a moment to explain not just the nature and the mission of the organization, but also how the India chapter relates to the global movement. So thank you for allowing us to interview you today. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what is Transparency International broadly, globally speaking, what is its mission and nature of the organization, and also how does the India piece fits into the big hall? Thank you for inviting me mm. for this interview, Tosca. Uh, the Transparency International is a global coalition against corruption. Okay. So uh, what we are trying to do uh, here is to reduce corruption worldwide. It is uh, extremely difficult to eliminate corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it is possible, we believe, to reduce corruption um, in the everyday lives of people and so that uh, public service delivery and a lot of other services become a lot easier for common people mm -hmm. because it's the poor who get affected most by corruption. I see. And the Transparency International India chapter is the national member, if you will, in India of the global? Uh, uh, Transparency International India is the national chapter. Chapter. Because all the national chapters in more than 100 countries mm -hmm. where we operate, mm -hmm. they are the national chapters part of this coalition. So each chapter has their own mandate to fight corruption in their individual country. Okay, okay. So uh, we do a lot of work with the government. We uh, come up with anti-corruption tools. We uh, come up with strategies for improving governance. We do a lot of work with the private sector. Mm. We uh, also work with poor people at the grassroots level, uh, all with the aim to reduce corruption. I see. And so, um, Tell us a little bit how you personally got involved in transnational activism of this nature around corruption and how over time you became a leader in the civil society sector. Uh, well, uh, I have, um, uh, this was um, very interesting for me because I started my career as an investigative journalist. Uh -huh. So for 10 years I was a full-time investigative journalist, but then I got into the private sector. Mm -hmm. For several years I was in the private sector, but I did not really enjoy uh, um, the sense of satisfaction that mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. um, when you are in um, when uh, you work for the people. Mm -hmm. um, that comes only if you work in a civil society organization. Um, even as a journalist, I very strongly felt that there is only so much that you can do as a journalist. You can only write about them. Right. But when it comes to doing hands-on, uh, when it comes to really helping poor people. Um, and uh, working with the government in uh, changing policies that will eventually affect poor people. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, that uh, kind of satisfaction will come only if somebody works in a civil society organization or NGOs. I see. So that is how I got into this. So you basically went from journalism to a private sector yes. uh, position and then jumped to being the national leader for the India chapter of Transparency International. Uh, yes, uh, but just before um, getting into Transparency International, uh, I was working in very small NGOs in rural India. Okay. I worked in um, Uttaranchal, which is the Himalayan state, mm -hmm. and in some very backward states in India at the grassroots level where we had no uh, television, right. uh, no telephone, so far removed from the modern day civilization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that was the time when um, uh, I had completed my mission of uh, setting up a hospital for some very poor people living in the Himalayas. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to come back to Delhi. Uh, that was the time when Transparency International India happened. Oh, okay. So since, as you know, the the, this first program of the Transnational NGO Leadership Institute focus very uh, specifically on this 
shift this leadership leap from second tier of responsibility to, to top leadership. What, um, let's say before you came into the program uh, this past week, uh, what to you in your mind distinguishes that, uh, that top leadership in terms of insights, understanding, skills you need to have from working at a, uh, at a second tier of responsibility or third tier? Uh, well, my expectation when I came here mm. was to understand what um, leadership is all about. Um, although I am leading the India chapter, but I always felt that there was something missing, that I needed to know something more, mm -hmm. um, especially in terms of um, uh, probably dealing with uh, my colleagues, um, also, how to deal with uh, the board members, the management. Mm. Uh, those are some things that I have benefited immensely from doing this course. Mm. Um, because um, uh, you know certain things, but very often you need somebody else to tell you that mm. this is your uh, strength and this is your weaknesses mm -hmm. and this is how you can improve. Mm. So, um, this leadership course has helped me immensely in doing that, oh, in learning more about myself. That's very kind of you to say. Um, you've already answered my next question, which was going to be what you expected to gain. So um, turning back to uh, Transparency International and, and maybe the India chapter, but also the international um, organization with its headquarters and secretariat in, in Berlin and so on. What are some of the leadership transition and succession challenges that TI, Transparency International, is currently facing and how is it dealing with those? Uh, well, a lot of chapters uh, internationally, um, we find that those chapters are very small mm. uh, uh, and the situation in the country is um, not very conducive to reducing corruption. Mm. Uh, the situation in the country requires a lot of intervention. That is not happening because the organization does not have strong leaders. Um, and uh, that is the reason why those uh, chapters are not doing as well uh, as they should in, to help the entire organization to achieve the mission. Mm. So uh, if we are in some way able to train those chapters, those mm -hmm. leaders, existing leaders in mm -hmm. those chapters, that would immensely help uh, the movement, this movement against corruption. And just to follow up on that out of interest, what does TI currently do about leadership development? Uh, I'm not so sure. Okay. I'm not so sure what they do because um, uh, corruption is such a uh, such an important issue mm. um, that once we are part of this organization, we just throw ourselves in the Into you it. know yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think they are doing much. Okay, it's also a very political yeah. and and in many. Uh, location sensitive topic. That's uh, right. So that requires yeah. also certain specific leadership skills around politics exactly. and power and yeah. persuasion. So the final question is, um, if you could just um, uh, point to one insight, interesting finding you have from this program, one surprise uh, that you learned in this program, what would you tell us about? Oh, well, I always thought that um, I was working with people. Um, I always thought that um, my relationship with people and I value my uh, relationship with people mm -hmm. uh, immensely. Mm -hmm. uh, but this course taught me that I'm not, um, I'm more of a, um, a task oriented person mm -hmm. rather than a relationship person. Mm -hmm. um, it made, it set me thinking uh, whether I should put more emphasis on my uh, human resources, HR relations. So that came as a surprise to me. Huh. But I am very happy to share this with you that um, I, I used to be a little, it was a little bit disconcerting for me. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it was a revelation. And I think that I will work on that skill. Mm. I need to really develop that skill whether it is by learning it or by having somebody to support me there. Yeah. But uh, that definitely has helped. 
Okay, so that's a, an instance, if you will, of an awareness and insight yeah, about your, right. your style of leadership and personality. Well, thank you very much for allowing us to do this interview. I thank appreciate you. it. And thank you for inviting me. Mm, you're quite welcome.